Hello and welcome back to the Earth Day special. Very excited to welcome uh, to the special our next guest, talking uh, with her for the first time, the co-communications director of the U.S. Youth Climate Strike, Neha Desaraju. Welcome to the special. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, very glad to have you here. Um, you know, uh, I want to learn more about your background, um, why you got involved in environmental activism, but I'd also like to learn about the organization as well, the U.S. Uh, US Youth Climate Strike. So uh, tell us tell us about it. Yeah, of course. So um, I kind of got involved through, um, I guess, environmental organizing and climate organizing through U.S. Youth Climate Strike. So I owe the organization a lot. Um, it's definitely radicalized me. Um, and, you know, I guess that's where um, I owe a lot of my learning and my growing experiences through organizing from. Um, and I made a lot of friends through this organization, of course. And um, the, organizing, uh, the organization itself um, is a um, pretty left uh, environmental organization run entirely by youth under the age of 20. Um, so that's, I guess, I guess, the spiel of the organization mm -hmm. and me. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm curious. I mean, um, I'm assuming that the day-to-day -day operations of the organization, like everything else in America, is probably being affected by the lockdown. Um, how are you staying sort of uh, both tapped into your activism, the organization, environmental concerns while you're, you know, on quarantine? Yeah, so already since we're um, a national organization run by youth, I think it's actually been pretty smooth. I guess the transition online, um, just from like a logistics and organizational standpoint, since a lot of our day-to-day um, -day activities were online already, we, we um, stayed connected online through, um, you know, various communication systems. Um, definitely some of the things that we've had to change is our specific um, Earth Day actions. Um, a lot of our chapters were already planning a lot of actions online um, and obviously or they were planning um, actions in person and now we've had to move actions online um, in, and we were also participating in, in the um, international live stream um, that's being hosted by um, a lot of different organizations around the world that's going to be um, that's going to take place on the three days that the original Earth Day actions were supposed to take place. Um, so Wednesday, Thursday and Friday of Earth Week. Um, and we're participating, we're participating in that. And we're also conducting a few digital actions of our own, um, such as um, a bunch of online webinars that we're hoping will kind of um, give our organization a lot of context to reorient ourselves into, especially after Bernie Sanders dropped out of the race. Yes, something that uh, I can only speak for myself, I'm still dealing with as well and uh, trying to mm -hmm. take stock of exactly where to go uh, in the future from here. Um, so I know that you've talked about, uh, you mentioned there, uh, sort of the nature of the organization. And obviously there are a lot of great organizations, including youth-led um, and youth staffed uh, organizations in the environmental area. I know that you've talked about the need for these sorts of groups to network with each other, to pursue sort of mutual aid. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. So I think especially in this time that we're in right now, um, in, in a time of crisis, it's really, really important for organizations and campaigns, especially to, I guess, reorient, reorient and um, and do a lot of mutual aid networking. Um, I know USYCS in particular is hoping to, um, you know, take um, is hoping to um, network a lot even after we hope uh, even after the crisis, this coronavirus crisis ends. Um, and we really want to expand our efforts in community aid and mutual aid. And one of the reasons this is really important is because um, you know, helping helping the communities that we want to help will really, um, it'll really depend on us making sure that our resources are going to the right place. Um, we know that electoral organizing has been um, definitely a really, especially in the last few years, we've seen that it hasn't really brought about a lot of change. And with Bernie Sanders dropping out of the race, um, in my opinion, it's never been a better time for organizations to reorient, to do a lot of more, I guess, social revolution, social organizing, rather than just political advocacy and political organizing. Well, and in, in terms of one potential area of explicitly political organizing, I know that the organization has said that it's not going to be endorsing uh, Joe Biden, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have said that. And so I, I'm assuming not overly enthusiastic about what he has said and done in terms of the environment in the past. Yeah, definitely. And I also like it's definitely more of the fact that um, it's not just like it's not like we're not like anti Joe Biden or anything. It's more of just we we have a certain limited amount of resources and we think that can go to um, to real change, real concrete change rather than the marginal change that Joe Biden might bring over our other option, Donald Trump. 
And so uh, as you're doing this reorienting, do you see this as potentially, and especially with, with people being at home and having a little bit of more, more time thanks to the quarantine, do you think that this is a good time for, for other people to, to get involved in environmental activism, especially youths who might be sort of uh, taking stock of w what effect they can have uh, on the political system? Is this like an opportunity for, for growth of organizations like your own? Yeah, definitely. And as I mentioned before, um, this organization and really the climate, the climate movement as a whole has really been um, has really radicalized me um, as ever since I started. And I think that's that's also one of the reasons that we're conducting our webinars is to make it easier for people to relate the climate movement to a broader movement as a whole. And we have to kind of understand that the climate movement isn't isolated and it's connected to um, to a lot of other social movements that that we see are happening. And I think it's really important that we bring in y more young people and into, I guess, this new process. It's outside of something that maybe people haven't been familiar, familiar with before. Um, political advocacy is something that people see all the time. Um, but this is a really good opportunity to bring people um, who previously were interested into doing something new and doing something different. Uh, and finally, uh, with each of the people that we're talking with for this uh, special, I want to know, um, how are you staying climate conscious, environmentally conscious during the quarantine? Are you finding it easier or harder with this new situation we're in? Mm -hmm. Personally, um, I've actually been finding it a lot easier um, just from an individual standpoint. Um, I think it's it's really made me take stock of, um, you know, what I value in my life. And um, honestly, it's give, uh, given me a lot of time to read, too. So yeah. I've been able to read about, um, you know, all these different movements that I really want to draw from and that I really want to be able to support. Um, obviously, the climate movement didn't start with me, nor did it start with a single person. It started with um, a lot of um, people of color, um, especially black and indigenous people of color. And um, I think personally, it's really made me appreciate the work of those organizers who have organized before me and have been organizing um, like this for centuries. Uh, well, I think that's awesome. You're clearly staying uh, very productive. And, uh, you know, as part of that, we do very much appreciate you joining us uh, here at TYT for our special. Uh, Neha uh, Desaraju of the U.S. Youth Climate Strike, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for having me.